Hi, and welcome to your first lecture in Fundamentals of Supervision, ABUS 179. In this video, we'll be looking at supervising in uncertain times. In uncertain times, supervisory work becomes more complex and therefore more demanding. A supervisor's professional and interpersonal skills are constantly challenged as he or she deals with balancing the needs of the organization with the needs of the individual employee. Sometimes the solutions to these conflicts are not so easy and everyone involved may not be fully satisfied throughout the process. A supervisor's job is made even more demanding by the knowledge that they don't work in a static world. In an environment that is rapidly changing, the success of the supervisor rests on his or her ability to keep up with the changing environmental factors that affect everything the organization does. While demanding, supervisory work also brings satisfaction and rewards to those in its ranks. The most basic of reasons is that supervisors are in the first tier of management, which is the starting place for most middle and upper level managers. The increased responsibility one finds while climbing the management hierarchy is very rewarding. Supervisors also find satisfaction in their primary role, the management of people, which involves getting diverse people to work together toward a common goal. The scientific management approach attempts to find the one best way to do a particular task, often using time and motion studies and the other principles of industrial engineering. The functional approach assumes that there is a series of functions that managers should perform, planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. The human relations slash behavioral science approach is the approach to management that focuses on the behavior of people in the work environment and on what causes employees to behave the way they do. The quantitative systems approaches are fields of management that use mathematical modeling as a foundation to help solve organizational problems. Supervisors must deal with many complex changing factors and trends affecting the workforce. The workforce will continue to grow in part due to a considerable increase in Asian and Pacific Island immigrants who are highly skilled professionals and IT workers. The age composition of the workforce will change drastically as boomers age 46 to 64 account for the majority of the labor force of, and of managerial positions, while the youth labor force is expected to grow rapidly, thus creating a glut of younger employees waiting for management opportunities. The proportion of the workforce that consists of women and members of racial minorities is increasing, and as it continues to increase, these people will not be pigeonholed into specific types of jobs or tasks as they have been in the past. The more diverse workforce will create numerous problems, such as multicultural and multilingual challenges and conflict between family obligation and job obligation. There will be a substantial number of part-time employees and contract employees in the workplace. College graduates will be a larger proportion of the workforce, but there will be an increasing number of mismatches between a person's educational preparation and the employment opportunities available. Employees will continue to expect a greater voice in workplace decision making and they will also expect to be empowered. There will also be many changes in areas other than the workforce. Although forecasts project a steady need for people in business related services, large industrial corporations likely will continue to eliminate workers. Governmental laws and regulations will continue to have a major impact upon the policies and activities of most organizations. Also, changing technology and competition from the global marketplace will be a major influence on supervisory management. The abilities of highly effective people can be developed, even as the world continues to change around them. Supervisors who want to be more effective will put themselves into situations where they can practice those techniques and develop communication, leadership, and other skills that can be used in many situations. Finally, the supervisor who aspires to become a more effective leader needs to have of a professional outlook and must recognize the necessity for a personal program of continuous self-development. Since the new millennium, corporations have been challenged with problems such as declining sales, a sagging stock market, accounting fraud, the list goes on and on. As a result, American workers have become increasingly disillusioned with corporate life. Future corporate success, perhaps even survival, will rely on the skill of managers at all levels of an organization. 
A supervisor is a first-level manager in charge of entry-level and other departmental employees. Working supervisors are first-level individuals who perform supervisory functions, but who may not legally or officially be part of management. This means they don't necessarily get paid for their supervisory position either. These individuals also may be referred to as foreman, team leader, lead person, or coach. There are three levels of management hierarchy, top-level management, middle-level management, and supervisory or first-level management. The first-line supervisory position is the level on the management hierarchy at which most people obtain their first management experience. For many people, being a supervisor provides a variety of satisfying experiences. Among these are the opportunities to develop the abilities and potential of motivated employees, the increased responsibility and pay that comes as one climbs the management hierarchy, the unpredictable nature of the job, and the sense of accomplishment from doing a job well. Just as there's a huge positive side to being a supervisor, there are some stress situations that accompany supervisory responsibility. Being a supervisor is often more than a full-time job. It's fraught with conflict. The major environmental factors, which affect everything the organization does, are not static, and the rate of change is rapid. The study of management has become more systematic and formalized, often involving current and prospective managers in classroom settings. The four schools of management thought we'll be discussing in upcoming slides are scientific management, the functional approach, human relations slash behavioral school, and quantitative slash systems approaches. The scientific management approach is a school of management thought that focuses on determining the most efficient ways to increase output and productivity. This is the foundation for the field of industrial engineering. Frederick Winslow Taylor, often referred to as the father of scientific management, believed that the principles of engineering could be used to make workers as much like machines as possible. He wanted people to behave like efficient, mindless, and repetitive beings. And he also felt that the manager should do the research, planning, and instructing. Other proponents of the scientific management approach included Frank and Lillian Gilbreth, who concentrated on the study of employee motions and their efforts to study how to accomplish work more efficiently. The functional approach is the school of management thought that asserts that all managers perform various functions in doing their jobs, such as planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. Henry Favel was a French industrialist who introduced the functional approach to the study of management. An updated version of the, of the functional approach to management is still popular today, with the five functions now identified as planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. Planning refers to setting down a course of action. Organizing means designing a structure. Commanding means directing subordinates' actions. Coordinating refers to pulling elements together toward a common objective, while controlling means ensuring plans are carried out. The human relations movement, or behavioral science approach, was a management movement that focused on the behavior of people in the work environment. Within the human relations, or behavioral school, you have the Hawthorne effect. This is the fact that special interests shown in people may cause them to behave differently. It's named for the Hawthorne plant of Western Electric where it was first noted. The quantitative or systems approach is the field of management study that uses mathematical modeling as a foundation. The advent of the computer has enabled large firms to study sales, cost, production, and other data and ask what-if questions.